Hello, gentle people. If you are new to the Sparrow Art Vibes channel, welcome. And if you are a returning subscriber, welcome back. A couple of weeks back, I ordered some molds from Let's Resin, and I was looking for some new molds that came with holders. So as we go over our materials, the first thing we need is the molds for the coasters. There are five of them, and this is in the shape of an octagon. And then this is the mold for the holder. And this is a little different because the coasters are going to sit inside these four pieces. My favorite resin because of the discounts that I get shopping in Michaels is the Part A. Craftsmart Part A resin. Craftsmart Part B hardener. We're going to be mixing uh, just over 300 milliliters of resin, so I need the larger bowl and the silicone stir stick for that. And then we are going to need our smaller measuring cup. Three colors of mica powder, so we need three stir sticks. Of course, we need our nitro gloves. And then for mica powders, I am going to be using the May Spring Silver Lining. The May Spring Barney Purple. And then we're going to add a Magic Fly Sparkle Pink. And these I'm going for sort of a floral effect. And so we're going to make the center of the flower using uh, this light pink, this light pink crushed glass. And I believe that's it. This is really simple. All righty. First thing we need to do is mix our resin. Uh, I'm going to be mixing 300 milliliters, so I have the 150 and 300 already marked on my container. So we're going to be pouring 150 milliliters of the Part B hardener. And 150 milliliters of the Part A resin. I am always reminding you to follow the manufacturer's instructions. And so for our Craft Smart Clear Casting and Coating resin, our directions say that we need to pour equal amounts of part A and part B, which is a one-to-one -one mix ratio that we did, 150 and 150. And then it says slowly mix for a minimum of five minutes. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, I will fast forward this so you're not bored watching me stir. Okay, so now we're going to mix our colors and we need so I am going to pour 60 milliliters of this well actually let's do 50 We're doing 50 that. <clears throat> and 
And to this we're going to add our sterling lining. I'm always saying sterling silver, but it's sterling lining. I've not seen any metallic flowers in nature. I haven't seen a metallic flower occur naturally <clears throat> in nature, but we're going to add some metallic to this just to be a little outside the box. So that's our sterling lining. And then we need <clears throat> a little bit, and this is not a lot, because most of this is going to be clear on the bottom. So we have our Barney Purple. pink that's very pretty so that's our sparkle pink And then this is just a dab for our uh, cut glass. somebody cutting the grass in the background. <clears throat> Sorry about that. So the first thing I want to do, I'm trying to talk over the um, lawnmower. I'll wait. I am going to go ahead and start pouring and simply ignore, oh, I think they just stopped. Let's see. The lawnmower has stopped. Great. So now we can get started on, on this because now you can hear me. So what I'm going to do, I want the legs on this holder to be silver. So we're just going to fill the legs.
and a little heat. And then we're going to fill um, these with clear resin. Well, not fill, but three quarters fill these with clear resin. And I'm going to move this out my way, move this over. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is simply pour rings of each color on here. Okay, so we are going to start. Resin always pulls to the center. So because these are octagon, I have no idea how these are going to turn out. Um, but we'll just get started. Okay, and then our purple. I forgot my glass mixture. I forgot my glass. I completely forgot my glass mixture. realized I forgot the glass when I went to pour the pink. Okay, so now we're going to pour 
pour the pink. some more of the purple end of the sparkle pink I added a little more purple mica powder to the purple that was left over and we're going to just pour this on the outside
Okay, and so we're going to now hit this with the heat gun to pop any air bubbles. I mean, look at the bubbles right there. And then I'm going to take the end of my um, paintbrush and just in, in, in. And we are basically trying to create the illusion of petals. And I guess I'm going to go a little like that since these came in the middle to make them look like it's supposed to be that way. And then I'll come back in about a half an hour and mix the base that goes on the holder here. Let's see. Everybody knows my table is uneven and you see that point sliding this way. So we're just going to raise that a little bit and stop it from coming that way. So I'm going to cover this and I'll be back in about an hour to pour the bottom of the holder. I just don't want the resin to mix in with the silver. I am back and we're going to take this off. And off camera, I poured, um, mix some more purple, and that was to go in the bottom of this. Again, what I didn't want was for my purple to go down and mix in with my um, silver. So I wanted to give the silver a chance to sort of form a skin. Actually, you know, I'm going to blow this over that. Um, well, no, I guess it's moving on its own. But see how the purple just came up right here? See, like I've got purple right there. I did not want um, any of the purple down on the legs.
Okay, so we'll cover this and leave this to cure overnight. It is the next day and this is probably my favorite part of working with resin and that is unmolding everything. So these are pretty. Let's start with our holder. And let's see about getting this out of here. This mold is kind of, um, I don't want to say flimsy, but yeah, I guess it's, it's thin. It's not a really high quality mold. Oop, and I'm bending that. So peel it off. That works. There we go. We figured it out. It peels. Okay, so there's our holder. Pop this back the way it's supposed to be. So that's nice. I wanted the silver, hand, the silver sides. So that's what we have. This has to flatten out. And then you see the center there. Okay, and let's look at these. that's crystal clear. That's pretty. And if we flip it over, not quite the petals that I wanted, but that's nice. That's nice. You can see sort of the 3D effect on that. That's nice. So again, that's the back. And then if we turn it over. Yeah, those are different. You can see the petal design here. And you've got the little swirl there. The pink could have been deeper. They come out of here really easy. That's nice. the front side. These vary in terms of this purple. Um, they're not even all the way around, but you do have that 3D sort of effect going on. These peel out of here really easily. Nice clean pores. Yeah, it's funny on these, it's like dark, 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 and then I kind of lose it on one side. So I think this was just a thicker line. And then the last one. So that's the back side and that's the front side. So on all of them, it looks like I poured thicker on one side that I did on the other. Okay, so let's see what they look like here. Interesting. So there you go. Now I normally put um, the rubber bumps on the bottom of my coasters, 
But if I put bumps on here, these are going to be way higher than the top edge of this holder. In fact, I'm not even sure why they have a fifth one because that's a perfect fit right there. And this is really a little higher. So the only thing I need do, these are nice clean pores. That's beautiful. The edges on these are beautiful. Let me get rubber bumps to go on the bottom of the holder and I will be back in a second. The edges on all of these are beautiful. Boy, that's nice and clean. No overspill, no overflow. The edges on that are just beautiful. But I do always take my Dremel and just make sure that this is not sharp, but those edges are nice. Okay. my 3M rubber bumps, the larger ones. I'm just going to put one, two, three, four. Um, and then I'm always talking about when you sand, sometimes you get that little white line showing up right there so we need to take care of that real quick and so I'm just going to put a little drop on here and run this right along this edge And like I said, if you don't want to use the varnish, you can always use um, clear nail polish. But I like the varnish in that varnish is designed specifically um, as a finisher. Okay, so no one will ever know that that edge was sanded. So, voila. And then we just need to wipe these off. Actually, I probably should go along the edges of these with varnish as well as I'm looking at them. But I'm surprised at how, I mean, we always have color. These are like glass. These are crystal clear. This is beautiful. I think I'll go over the edges of these with um, some varnish as well. <clears throat> so just change brushes so I have a nice fine
All right, and voila, they are done.